The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Connie loves working jigsaw puzzles, and she's quite good at it. She completes at least one a day online. She and her sisters were really into jigsaw puzzles, often working them together. When I was first dating Connie, I was impressed with how good they were, which I am not. I particularly remember one puzzle that they had called Little Red Riding Hood's Cape. Connie, I'll bet you don't uh, think that I would remember that. <laughs> it it it, oh, it was the hood. <clears throat> I, stand, I stand corrected. <clears throat> it, it, was, it was very large. It was, it was circular, and it was all red. No corners, no picture. Can you imagine the challenge of putting together this puzzle with nothing to go on but the shape of the pieces? And as I read the scriptures for today's service, that jigsaw puzzle came to mind. It reminded me that every single piece of a jigsaw puzzle, sometimes a thousand or so, is different from every other single piece. And yet, they all fit together into a perfect whole. And that reminded me of how the same thing is true of us human beings. Every single one of us is different from every other one. Even identical twins develop their own personalities. In our epistle lesson today from St. Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, he emphasizes how these individual differences in people fit together to make an effective Christian community, just like the jigsaw puzzle. St. Paul says that there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit, a variety of activities and services, but the same God who activates all of them in everyone. He reminds us that each of us is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. He says there are gifts of wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy, and discernment. There are gifts of languages and interpretation of languages. And these are allotted to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. And for what purpose? To make a single body of many members. We were all baptized into one body and we were all made to drink of one spirit. St. Paul is, of course, talking about the Christian church and how each member brings his or her own special strengths to enable it to fulfill its mission guided by the Spirit. And that brings me to our feast day celebration today, the day of Pentecost, the birthday of the Christian church. To me, the most momentous event in the history of the world other than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The arrival of the Holy Spirit to empower the apostles and to gather the believers. The day of Pentecost was not the first time the Holy Spirit 
had appeared. Far from it. As early as the first chapter of Genesis, second verse, Scripture says, the earth was complete chaos and darkness covered the face of the deep while the Spirit of God swept over the face of the waters. Isaiah refers several times to the Spirit of the Lord as does Job. There are over 500 references to the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. And of course in our Gospel lesson today, Jesus appeared to the disciples on the day of his resurrection. Remember, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. This was weeks before his ascension and the day of Pentecost. What we experience on the day of Pentecost is a special dramatic appearance by the Holy Spirit, one promised by Jesus to empower his disciples. Just before his ascension, which we celebrated Thursday of last week, Luke 24 tells us that Jesus opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And then he told them, and I quote, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. That power instilled in them by the Holy Spirit on that day changed the apostles from a cowardly, unsophisticated, disorganized, dispirited, and unmotivated bunch of young men into the most powerful force for good the world has ever known. They were given the power to convey the message of Jesus eloquently and persuasively in multiple languages, and they fanned out as missionaries across the known world. Peter went to Rome. His brother Andrew went to Greece. John's brother James may have gone to Spain before his martyrdom in Jerusalem. Philip went to Asia Minor. Bartholomew, known as Nathaniel in John's Gospel, went to Armenia. Thomas went to India. James, the son of Alphaeus, went to Egypt. Thaddeus, also known as Jude, went to Persia. Simon the Zealot went to Samaria. And together their efforts created what we know today as the Christian Church. But there was one equally important thing that the Holy Spirit did on that day of Pentecost. And that was to create the Christian community. The apostles were not the only ones changed by the Spirit on that day. Other followers of Jesus and even casual observers were moved by the Spirit. As we continue to read in the book of Acts, we're told what happened after Peter's impassioned speech that we heard in today's lesson. Let me read a few of the later passages from Acts 2 from the New Living Translation. Peter's words pierced their hearts and they said to him and the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. 3,000. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals and to prayer. They worshiped together each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. In other words, they became a Christian community. That description in Acts and 1 Corinthians of the early Christians is not much different from what we experienced here at Zion Church today. We're each blessed 
by the Spirit with a variety of gifts which we share for the common good. We worship together. We share meals in the Lord's Supper. We enjoy the goodwill of one another. And we lean on one another for strength. We are the legacy of that momentous day of Pentecost. Just as our sisters and brothers in other Christian churches here in Washington and around the world, we are the fruit of the Spirit's creation of the Christian church and the Christian community. What a joy we share because of it. Imagine how different our lives would have been without that day of Pentecost. We thank God that it happened. And we thank God for his gift of the Holy Spirit that comforts and sustains each and every one of us each and every day of our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah.